Making it, you know, pleasing to the eye and very functional and then obviously very convenient to be right there in the building, so that's that's a big deal. How'd it go today in practice? Oh, I thought about like yesterday in, in that we, we did start very well towards the, you know, second half. Uh, it's just our execution level went down. I'm talking offensively. Uh, more drop balls. Just things that happen when you get fatigued. Things that happen when you get really hot. And we're pushing them. Uh, you know, they're definitely not comfortable. But, you know, I don't really want them to be comfortable on Tuesday and Wednesday for sure. Tomorrow we'll, we'll back off of them a little bit. Friday there won't be any running at all. And um, we'll be fine. But it's, and you're feeling it now. I don't know if you feel it for two hours and you're running full speed and coaches are all over your rear end, it's, it's you know, it's tough, so. But, you know, like I told them, it's, it's hot in Boca Raton, you know, and it's and everybody in America is doing it, so don't feel sorry for yourself. Mark, at this point, how do you feel about, about Cortell and, uh, and Anthony both uh, defensive tackles? Yeah, uh, I'd say both of them are uh, caution. I don't think we've asked this before about the special teams, which obviously did really well on a, on a, a small miscue or two. Damn. Um, yeah. How, do you do one third of practice on special teams? Like, how much emphasis are you putting on that particular well, area? Let's of see. Practice? Every day we do PAT field goal. Every day we do two uh, sessions of kicking drums. Um, you know, I say every day, you know, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Uh, on Thursdays we do all four phases of the kicking drums. And we have a, 15, a minimum of a 15 minute meeting every day for specials. And when we're reviewing the game, we go, I think we go 30 minutes of, of time. So I think we, we go about as much or more than anybody else would do in the special teams. I don't think we're light on it as far as the amount of time we give to it. Coach, how important, uh, how much emphasis is on the run game to help the defense with the tempo that everybody was going to play with? You know, keeping right. the run game, keeping the defense maybe off the field a little bit? Well, we're going to be just trying to execute offensively, and we love running the ball, period. Um, you know, so we'll, we'll run the ball, but as of, you know, right now, we don't plan on trying to, you know, slow the game down in any way. We're going to try to use our tempo as well, and um, you see who, you know, which teams can execute the best. But, you know, defense, Certainly, uh, I mean, if there's ever a time the defense is struggling, I can change gears if I need to, but that's, that's not the plan. Okay. Along the same lines, you want to be a tough, physical running team. How satisfied were you? That it was a good start. I mean, you know, the numbers were big, obviously, but, but when you look at the tape, we executed pretty good. The whole thing is, can you get your hat on the right guy, and can you, you know, fit up, you know, we talk about hat placement. Is your hat inside? Is your hat outside? You know, do you drive your feet on contact? Do you, are people blocking downfield? Are the backs reading their keys? Is the quarterback getting us in the right play? Because he does have some options in the run game to try to get us in the best possible play. So the execution wasn't perfect by any means, but there was a lot of really good images of everybody doing what they're supposed to do. That's what I care about the most. How do you think uh, Trent did? I know he has that big club on his hand. And uh, how hard was that thing? Yeah, it, it, you get used to it, but it's, diff, it's definitely not natural. But I've seen a lot of guys play with the club, you know, over the last 30 some years. You know, I mean, I remember, I remember one time, I don't know who we were playing. This was way back when I was at Florida State, and Coach Bounds, like, he saw this DB with a club on his hand. He's like, we got to throw the ball on that guy. Okay, so it doesn't matter what we were like trying to find the guy with the club and throw it to him. Because he only had one hand. He, well, he got two picks that day. <laughs> so, yeah, he did. He did. So, you know, I don't know. If it's that big of a disadvantage. Or he has a lot of heart, right? I mean, what could you say about that kid as a player? Yeah, well, you know, I think all of our guys are going to go if they're able. And there's some injuries that allow you to keep going and some that you can't. And, uh, you know, it's just like you know, if a guy has an ACL, there's not a whole lot he can do about it. I think those kids are pretty tough too. But, but to play with that, you know, with, with something hurting is pretty common in football. It's just more visible with him because there's a cast over it. What did you see with that? Not bad. Uh, yeah. Aside from that, pretty good. Not bad. No, it, it was overall pretty good. Matter of fact, we've, you know, we've been letting our threes get reps uh, in in practice, and they get about um, you know four to eight reps a day, and they, they've done the threes have actually done a pretty good job of executing. So I think part of it is that we you know, 
we're into reps. We're into not running a whole lot of different plays, but maybe a lot of different formations here and there. But you know, we try to make it to where it becomes second nature to them, and they, they're doing a pretty good job. Malik's touchdown on the road. Yeah. What happened there? Well, it was a what we call a naked bootleg, where we just uh, we act like we're pitching the sweep and come out of there running with the ball. And you know, when we do pitch the sweep, we fake it like we're running with the ball. So we try to make them both look the same. And, in this case, he got you know the end man on the line and kind of bit the cheese, and he got out of there, and they covered it actually perfectly. They usually when, when that happens, somebody springs open free, but they covered everybody. So because of that, there was really no one to get the end man on the line who's in charge of containing that play. You know, he he squeezed down, and we got outside of him. So it was, it was time to run, and we tell him your first read is to run the ball on a, on that on that play. You come to run. We always say you come to run. He came out to run, and and. Everybody was covered as he was pressing the line of scrimmage. And, but the good news was whoever was covered ended up locking up, blocking the guys that were covering him, and he walked in the end zone. For a guy like Gus, who obviously missed all last year with a foot injury, to be able to run the way he did Saturday right. in live action, how big is yeah, that? Yeah, that was huge. That, was, that, that had to be fun for him. It was fun for us. Uh, Thomas Brown does a great job with these backs, learning how to practice. And, you know, they practice full speed. Every time they run, a, run the ball in practice, they are sprinting. 20 yards down the field or whatever he designates that day. And then they hustle right back and go do it again. And, uh, so they get in condition during practice. And then in the game, it should be easier. And, you know, Gus coming off the bench when he did, you know, their defense had played a little bit. And he was probably the freshest man on the field. And it looked that way when he took off.